Hello, in this video I want to make overview of the design of the sodium well, let's call it cell. I want to cover design of the new version of the cell. So the idea is that you will put the cell on some stand, turn it on and the sodium will be collected in some container with mineral oil. However, this functionality has not been tested and there may be some issues, so don't take me as granted. Well, the sodium reactor cell is quite popular in my channel. Also, many chemists say that sodium is quite expensive. So, I was thinking about offering this cell for sale. So, I made some calculations and I don't know, you tell me. So, material for one cell should cost about 50 bucks. I mean, not, this is with shipping to US. Most expensive item is power source. So, it's probably much better to buy one from China, for example, this one. I mean, come on, 15 bucks with shipping, okay, there's 40 days delivery time, but I don't think mine will be any better. I have created an account on Patreon, but then I realized that it doesn't support one-time payments. I was also thinking about Kickstarter, but that is not ideal because of rather low view count. Last option is Paypal, so if you would consider buying this, be sure to leave a comment. Just for clarification. Until there is no prototype build, and even if it is, this cell needs some work, so my price would be probably about 70 bucks or so. Well, I mean, feel free to contact me by any means and we can make some deal. And as usual, the design of this cell will be publicly available. So let's start with the overview. As you can see, I have my cell prepared, so I will not annoy you with me drawing this from scratch. So let's start with the tube. This will be the cell body. In this case, it is 76mm OD and 2mm thickness. This tube is thinner than the previous version, because if you store cell properly, it is pretty sufficient. On the bottom side, about 10mm piece of circular profile is press fitted in the tube, ideally welded afterwards, otherwise sealed with cement. You can use high temperature cement to fix this piece if it is a bit smaller. But I would not recommend doing that, because the cell may leak molten sodium hydroxide. In the center of the bottom piece, the hole is drilled to which small tube is fitted to provide greater stability for the electrode and also better sealing. Once again, all things must be sealed absolutely perfectly. The electrode is also insulated by piece in small tube. Here comes the electrode, and the two more holes are drilled for the second electrode. Now let me do a cross section of the cell so you can see things better. Now this piece is ceramic insulator made of fuse body. Like this one. Or if you have anything better, use what you have. But you can get a fuse even in Somalia probably. No offense. So this is the second electrode, positive. The smaller is negative. This shape is only for reference. In previous version it was wire woven to similar shape. And here it is. Once again, these electrodes have to be nickel or very high nickel, that means at least 80% nickel content. I remember that I tried to use wire from K-type thermocouple, which is chromal alumel, and the chromal wire worked quite well. Chromal means that it is chromium iron alloy. However, this was a very brief experiment, so I don't really know. Also, I don't know if nickel-plated steel would be good for this, because my request for manufacturing thick nickel plating was refused. But I think that at least 50 micrometers layer would be necessary. Next thing worth trying would be nichrome wire, and if I will be prototyping this, I would definitely try to use it. In the previous version, I made my electrodes from pure nickel wire salvaged from guitar strings. Men from the Dario company confirmed that wire is indeed pure nickel. I added a spacer to the bottom part to fix the collection tube in place. And here is the collection tube to which sodium outlet is attached. What you see now is rather a rough first thought and this will be changed. And here is the lid of the cell. Now let me make some slots in this collection tube to let the ions flow. In the previous version, this tube was drilled and actually it would be kinda stiffer, but this is also possible. Okay, so there are a lot of problems with this design. I will try to cover most of them. 
So here is second new version of this cell. As you can see, it's more or less the same, but I added a hole in the lid to simplify filling of material and output tube is changed. This is to allow siphoning of sodium metal. I don't really like it and I don't know if it will work, but at least now it looks like it should work. This blue transparent thing is simulated sodium hydroxide and that grey thing in the collection tube is simulated sodium metal. At least you get an idea what it will look like during operation. One problem is that during electrolysis there's hydrogen and oxygen produced. Hydrogen is produced in the collection tube, while oxygen outside of it, and if there's no way for hydrogen to escape into atmosphere, or if there is leak from the collection tube inside the cell, an explosion will occur. Temperature inside the cell is 330 degrees Celsius. Now you can clearly see that the hydrogen will leak through this yellow circle. Ok, so I got next version which still doesn't fix hydrogen issue, but reveals another one. And that is the problem with the sodium level. One thing is that the output tube can be blocked, in which case the sodium may short circuit with electrode and the whole cell body will become a big electrode. So for this case there are two floating wires, which will in case of collect tube make contact with sodium and it can disconnect the power supply. Next issue is what happens if the hydroxide level will drop down? Obviously, more sodium will have to be produced in order to make it through siphon. So here is the simulation that shows what will happen. As you can see, the sodium will displace some hydroxide by its weight. And the more sodium, the more displacement will occur. Until there is short circuit with electrode and then the whole cell will explode. Well, these explosions are not an issue here. But the fire is. This cell may cause serious fire, so definitely don't do it inside in your living room or in the kitchen. Also, you cannot fill this cell too much, because the molten sodium hydroxide can go over a wall. Quite a lot. In this third version of the cell, you can see that the lid hole is moved and there is separate lid for a collection tube. This collection tube is not fixed right now, but let's pretend that it doesn't matter. So hydrogen leak is fixed by providing path to atmosphere. This cell also solves another issue with hydrogen that I don't know if it exists. And that is hydrogen bubble buildup. So the collection tube is now square profile. This is to allow us to mount that strange looking piece to sides of collection tube. This piece should allow hydrogen bubbles to pass past sodium since sodium has rather high surface tension. It can be made rather easily by snap of knife blade. Rectangular grooves are done by opposite side of the cutting side of the blade. Assuming that you are using the blade with that cut off edge that many people don't know what it is good for. It can be used for example for cutting polymetal metacrylate sheets or for making sodium hydrogen separators. This other side looks like to be good cutting tool for late. And this V-profile is cut by sharp side of the blade. These hydrogen separators also minimize volume of the sodium for each siphoning cycle. So it should be more frequent with less sodium amount. Ok, so let's simulate the sodium production now. As you can see, a lot of cycles can be done now. With smaller amount of sodium in the collection tube, you also minimize the risk of sodium loss in case of explo- I mean accident. And also you will quote unquote minimize risk of fire. This third version of the cell is also slimmer and taller. In case you are thinking like, hey, I don't want nuclear sized sodium reactor. Well, here is Samsung Galaxy S7 next to this cell. Breathtaking, isn't it? If you like really, really want to, you may be even able to make truly pocket sized flat reactor. This is an alternative to the system with slimmer cell. It has even higher output frequency and similar amount of cycles. I like the taller cell a bit more as it can be heated more quickly, but I am also thinking that this output style looks much better. It even provides smaller bits of sodium which may be beneficial for someone. So that are a few ideas to inside functionality, but it doesn't end there. Let's deal with heating. Unless you have powerful DC source, that is at least 500 watts, 
you would like to use mains AC power to heat this. I would do it like this. First, make insulating layer by glass fiber cloth, impregnated by furnace cement. So here is the picture of glass cloth. You should impregnate it by pushing in cement on some flat surface and then rolling it onto the cell. Here are some pictures of furnace cement. I would definitely recommend this one. <laughs> now let it cure. This cement impregnation is basically necessary because such fine glass fibers will melt almost immediately when in contact with heating wire. Next, wrap heating wire around the cell. Use high nickel content wire. If you wet cement with molten sodium hydroxide, your cell will be deadly. But nickel can withstand molten hydroxide, which may eventually vaporize. Cantal will fail immediately. Then you may or may not use cement to secure this wire. At least three lines across the spiral, because wire will change land when hot and it will loosen and short circuit itself. Also, heat transfer will be a lot better. However, in case of failure, this will be non-repairable. So it's up to you. Then you should do another sealing layer by impregnated glass cloth. This ring here is hydroxide evaporation trap. Well, it may work, it may not. This is very questionable after what I experienced while running such cell. In these videos you can see that the molten sodium hydroxide gets everywhere. I don't think that this is due to hydroxide vapor condensation, because this powder wasn't very water soluble. However, it doesn't look like aluminate either. Perhaps some carbonates or what. Whatever it is, while operating cell it was all wet. Wet by hydroxide, so this may not be good idea and another approach will have to be found. Also, some heat insulation will be needed in order to not waste watts to keep hydroxide molten. And I think I will cut it here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I hope that this video helped you.